Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining this circle to work with the energy of the Capricornian festival together. My name is Alexander and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 Initiatives Coordination Group. Today we come together in this circle to focus our impressions and share them in the circle that the group precipitated during the festival week of the new group of old service, also known as the festival week of the group impact. It's been a powerful experience and the results of the work that's been done during the festival week will be unfolding through the coming months and years. And it's definitely very early to come with any specific impressions yet, but as we come in the circle, we would invite us to share those first impressions that came to us during the festival week and after the festival week and to listen to each other we could weave our group impressions together to get a more precise and clear vision of the work unfolding in front of us. Today and tomorrow, we will be coming together in a circle. And uh, each of these days, we will have an inner circle of panelists who will open the sharing and then we will open the sharing in the widest circle. But before going into that, we will have a silent meditation. Yes. Space of silence through which we will listen the note that comes from the hierarchy in this time of high opportunity of the full moon. And today in our uh, inner circle will be Claire Bainon from New Zealand, Michael and Tia Robbins from Finland, Uta Gabe from Germany and Israel, Katya Kaufman from the United States and Russia, and me, Alexander. So now we will, uh, I invite us to go into the silence, which will go for 12 minutes. And then when the silent 12 minutes of silence is over, we will hear the gong and I invite people in our inner circle, whenever they feel ready, to share the impressions that they ready to share. And then after some time, we will open this sharing to the widest circle. 
I hope I didn't forget any logistic logistical points that I had to bring before we start. And with this, I invite Tuya to sound the gong, calling us to the space of silence. <laughs>
I invite our inner circle to share any impressions, any ideas expressed through the words with us. Claire Bainan, Michael Robbins, Tuya Robbins, Tara Stewart, Uta Gabe, Katya Kaufman, Alexander Ilchuk. When you're ready, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is Claire in New Zealand. It is uh, very good to sit in the blessed silence together. It um, was one of the real gifts, I think, of Festival Week was finding new ways to practice silence and solitude as a group um, in the same way that we practice silence and solitude as individuals within that group. Also, the understanding that the silence and the solitude must lead us back out into the world and into service for the greater good. There were so many um, different impressions that came through for me from Festival Week. I was just enormously grateful, though, for the sense of this group container. Um, there's been so much going on um, on the global <laughs> um, stage. So much that's fractious and destructive and evidence of dismantling power structures. There's been so much suffering for animals and people in Australia. All the Pluto Saturn expressions. So I wanted to also share with you some something that came as a gift. Um, I've shared it already with our small 2025 coordination group, just briefly, but it was the rediscovery of a centaur, a female centaur whose name is Chariklo. And I feel that her appearance at this time, even though she's probably been known to a number of us for some time, but her reappearance at this time feels very significant. She is the wife of Chiron, the wounded healer. And what has been um, omitted in a lot of the astrology, as far as I can tell, that's kind of out in the popular stream, is her presence at this time in this Pluto-Saturn conjunction. And what she offers is so vital to the transition process that I just felt I needed to speak of her, to call her by name um, in this group as well, and to encourage everyone to go and do some research. Um, I Her discovery chart was just astounding. It's a six-pointed star. And she was um, first discovered in the skies in uh, February in 1997, actually in Tucson, Arizona, at Kitt Peak Observatory. And yeah, the astrology, the, the, the her natal chart, her discovery chart is just exquisite. Um, and I just, you know, she's a, a companion to us at this time, as she was to Chiron during his healing process. So what she promises is encouragement that beneath all the devastation and destruction that we're witnessing, as we know, they're the old paradigms that need to fall. But for the wider um, group, it's an encouragement that underneath all of that, there is this holding space and this um, trustworthy, reliable consort, if you like, to the process. And um, I find that enormously encouraging and comforting. So um, just wanting to share that with you. Thank you.
Thank you, Claire. Also, sorry, just to just to add that Chariclo will be in a very tight conjunction with Saturn and Pluto um, right through till the end of 2021, the beginning of 2022. So um, right there accompanying this process. Actually, that the coal face. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe Alexander Michael here in Finland. And um, uh, Clara, we're all very grateful to uh, know about this um, mythological stellar figure. And uh, there can be so much that is devastating both uh, to the good <clears throat> and also tearing down those structures which must come down in relation to the saturn pluto conjunction that it uh, is good to see another party connected with the process uh, for ourselves uh, here in the temple of silence we had people from all over maybe 10 to 12 to 13, depending on the day. And <clears throat> we held pretty long um, sessions and we're grateful to be connected with the Life Bridge and with the 2025 initiative. And also with some people representing um, south america so it felt uh, yeah. and of course yeah. the vietnam vietnamese group yeah. and a uh, group of course yeah yeah i'm glad to be reminded because there were so many people that um took it seriously and saw this as an opportunity to launch something significant uh, which will be necessary over the next five years or so. We can already see how important the new group of world servers will be. I think we did a lot of academic work here uh, in addition to broadcasts. And uh, we went into uh, the new group of world servers in depth as much as we could but of course it's really impossible given what the tibetan has given to explore the subject thoroughly but we really hoped to have laid out the requirements for true membership in this serving group and that the people who attended uh, our various programs um, would get the idea of what further uh, they had to do. I think we, I don't know, we probably had 30 different programs over the week. I haven't counted it all up, but, uh, and, and they'll be on uh, Makara. There's still some missing, which I have to send. And all of this was followed by the 25-hour vigil, which somehow we all survived, uh, for the welcoming in of each time zone uh, in the world at this crucial time of decision. I, I think uh, the last five years of the era of the forerunner here are remarkably important and remarkably 
potent. And we have a chance now to do something that uh, we and our number did not succeed in doing in the 1930s. We sometimes hear that World War III is, uh, to use this unsuitable word, but it's much used, trending. And uh, we see that wars can be started because of accidents and human error. And we have to uh, draw back and uh, somehow support the emergence of the good. Well, I felt all of us involved in this program in the various parts of the world um, went on record as saying they will uh, support the emergence of the soul of nations rather than the contentious personalities which seem to be lower ego driven. And uh, we know what we have to cast away and hopefully we are strong enough to bring in what will help uh, humanity enter the Aquarian age in the uh, proper manner. So I think, you know, that's all I have to say. It was, a, it was a good experience. I myself was a little bit under the weather, <laughs> but, um, but managed somehow to make it through and the people who were here were so uh, helpful coming from different places. And uh, it was a very good little community of uh, world servers representing different parts of the uh, different parts of the world. So uh, we're grateful to everybody who participated in a global manner. And we were happy to be part of that participation. And we went on and did the kind of thing we uh, so often do, uh, you know, emphasizing the academics um, and also the practical side, I think, um, of our inner esoteric uh, duties. So that's all I have to say for a moment. And uh, yeah, to you. <clears throat> I'm sorry, <clears throat> I could continue. So it was very. Um... I, I cannot say it was, it still is very strong um, experience and um, it is still not uh, finalized in me. I can um, sense that it is um, still uh, a process. <clears throat> a few things I can uh, like find is that what I have been contemplating a lot. One was that I was contemplating group. So what is group? Um, I knew of course by DK that Capricorn rules the group progress or group elevation, the law of elevation. And um, that was of course in my mind somehow to to like study what, what, what are those experiences or insights. And um, I really felt that group is needed, that it is the time for the group. One can say groups, but, uh, but in very core sense, it is one group. And that, uh, that I could translate then, that then one is talking about the new group of the servers, that is really one group. It is united, um, or it unites everyone. <clears throat> DK describes something like that. This group is not physically so much uh, linked together, but astrally very much because of love they have for humanity and the love which is pouring through them, but very strongly mentally. And that was something uh, to what I would like to somehow find now words 
in the, in the silence, I could feel the breathing of the group. And I was, I have been reflecting about that. What does that mean to me, this, that I feel the group breathing? And then I got this kind of like um, closer relationship it, <clears throat> that it then tells me it's living. This something united is so living and it's so breathing and it's so bringing forth or birthing new. And it is to that when I link myself, it is so strongly giving me burst to do even more or carrying even more, putting myself even more. And it has a real etheric impact in me. So then there, <clears throat> in individual sense, have all kinds of those insights which starts to work. And um, in that I uh, try to be very alert and, and uh, Mm, uh, somewhat like um, uh, uh, obedient what it is and then it brings me to remember again what I have said so many times about this Hopi Indians prophecy where certain things were fulfilled on earth um, the elders said that humanity will not survive if they are not coming together so that the time has come that they have to come together to the sacred circle and share their visions. And only this way one can go forward. And this is what I uh, sense in this group that um, we need to come together. We need to voice, everyone needs to voice things because this uh, includes always a seed for the next step. What, what the group can use together and like start dreaming further, envisioning further and their lives the, or their lies the life of humanity. As DK said that if there is no vision, people in berries and um, that, that is something what has been I just want to add that um, uh, I forgot Sydney Goodwill, which is a very long established group, <clears throat> and I'm sure they had their output and their outreach during these important times. I also want to mention that we received uh, some notes, I think, from um, Olivia Hansen and probably Dot was very much involved in this, that uh, what, something like 40,000 mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. were involved in this minute of silence. No, no, there were more. Oh, it more. Was, uh, uh, Olivia's site had been visited for... Oh, oh okay. 40,000 times visit, visiting that site, probably connected with the visitation yeah, from the Minute of the, Silence. Yeah, these trust pages and uh, yes, these common uh, pages. So there has yep. been huge... A great stimulation. And I want to acknowledge all that and uh, uh, give my gratitude to everybody involved who were involved in their own way. I think that's all we have right now. Well, I was difficult. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> about that this experience and what uh, what one tries to somehow get into physical consciousness like brain consciousness that it is <coughs> it is then able to be used and and also that this energy is now about the pluto and saturn the stellium in um, in the during the week, uh, the um, eclipse on new moon, now on full moon, enormous energies. So I am only thinking that this 
that um, if we arrive somewhere, road somewhere, that if we, that we are, yes, that the group is now needed and we are not satisfied if we are not coming together and if we are not succeeding. I think that is in our, everyone's heart. The group has to now succeed. So that was it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody. Lots of love and support to everybody. Thank you, Michael and Tuya. And uh, tomorrow, uh, at our tomorrow session, uh, Dot Maver uh, will be in a circle, and Rebecca and Richard Hood from Australia, who, uh, those uh, representing two of three groups who were co organizers uh, for the Global Silent Minute. And I see Wendy Thompson from World Goodwill today with us, so maybe we could, we'll hear from her later. It's, just want to acknowledge that tremendous work they did and our collective gratitude. And we continue our sharing in the circle. And um, as we share it, uh, I invite anyone from the inner circle step in any moment and uh, any to highlight any resonant thought that you uh, heard. In, Thank you. And yeah. I just want to say that uh, Katya has technical difficulties to join the webinar, but she's listening on WhatsApp. And whenever she's ready, I um, will do etheric magic and bringing her into our uh, sharing <laughs> circle. OK, I could. Uh, this is Uta from Germany. I can pick up uh, from what uh, Tuya and Michael shared. Um, we have been nine people together in Jerusalem uh, during the festival week and we had a few more days together after it where we traveled and uh, anchored some of these tremendous energies in Qumran, in the, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, and uh, the north of the Sea of Galilee, where arguably the most, the, the purest Christ energy in that area is uh, uh, still felt. Um, Yes, I would say for me also the most important is this sense of group and um, yeah, acting as one breathing, living being as the world group stepping into our role as uh, pl the planetary servant, server, server steward. Um, our I almost wanted to say slogan, our, our phrase uh, was synthesis is unity must be created. We held this theme of unity for a whole year. All of us who, who have uh, focused towards the festival week. And I agree with, with Tuya, we really did it. I also feel that we have moved on to another level in the spiral. We stand on a new platform now. Um, we are aware of the need for unity and that we must succeed now, that there's no fiddling around anymore. We need to be united and we need to learn how to communicate with each other remotely through the internet in the right way not too many words, not too little words, and all these, you know, technologies we need to learn. Um, at the same time, I also felt, especially because of our experience of being physically together, 
which we do at least twice a year, the importance of, of physical groups, physical anchors. And groups, small groups, kind of laboratories who act on behalf of some specific um, area or, or issue. Um, we have been focusing for a long time on Jerusalem and um, uh, this year we widened our focus on to the Middle East as a, yeah, as a whole entity, a whole area of the world that needs attention. Mm, and we have been experimenting with seeding, planting a new pattern, the, the new pattern of the, for the new civilization, sevenfold pattern. And it's still very early to say anything about uh, what this is enabling, but I can, can already sense uh, new doors opening, new understandings, a new way to approach. For me, it always has been difficult to, um, to bear, can you say, um, what's happening in Israel-Palestine? And um, at times I was angry and uh, I had these strong um, reactions through, throughout the years. And I think something is shifting here, and not only for me, by seeing the Israel-Palestine um, issue, relationship, in this wider context of the Middle East and also in the wider context of a new pattern being seeded everywhere, of course, but also in the Middle East. Um, it helps me to have a wider vision and to be more patient and less concerned with what's happening on the ground, knowing that this is only a very small, tiny moment in a big uh, evolution. Um, and it helps me also, I know it's it's a step on the way to, to conceive of the Middle East as an entity um, and the importance of stretching my consciousness, our consciousness into more of a planetary vision binding the Middle East and also other places of the world into our Western awareness. Um, I think the effort in our webinars during this week of dealing with the different languages uh, was a very good practice. The uh, the effort to bring in the Russian and the Spanish um, as only two uh, big languages. Um, and in general, also the effort to adopt um, a more universal language to come out of our esoteric uh, uh, nomenclature, that's how you call it. and. Uh, speak a language that others who don't have this background can also relate to is also something that I really appreciated. Um, yeah. Also having Alexander and Katya with us during this week, part of this week anyway, uh, brought, gave us the opportunity to, to experience firsthand what it means to hold this planetary <laughs> web together through their, their platform and all these many activities. 
Um, so this is also an opportunity to say a great thank you to the two of them of, and also, of course, the whole 2025 initiative group of uh, making this, of holding this, um, this planetary web in their consciousness and all of us uh, in this network. So a big thank you. That's enough for, for now. Thank you. Thank you, Uta. Are you unmuted whenever you ready? I think I can, I can share my impressions and um, I see it as a, as a long process of processing, <laughs> process of processing the impressions and the impact that came during this week and uh, I would probably even say the whole process of preparation for the festival week it was very empowering process for all the groups who were focusing and preparing coming together in the etheric connectivity with the other groups There was interesting news coming in the last day of the uh, festival week that um, Russian military forces brought on the combat duty the new missile system, supersonic missile system. That can travel, I don't remember, like 20 something times of the speed of the of sound. And it was kind of a shock uh, for me to read that. And uh, in a way, I see it as a symbol for what we as a world group are called to do to come to bring the forces in the world into equilibrium and we as a world group should become that supersonic or I would say super light speed unit on the combat duty to be able to face the needs that humanity is recognizes now and what's coming our way.
I'm grateful to Claire what uh, you shared about this uh, asteroid that is now in conjunction with Pluto, Pluto and Saturn and creating in a way that buffer space uh, and astronomically that asteroid is between Saturn and uh, Uranus so it's is there and it's the in a way that's the role that the world group is called to take on becoming a midwife becoming that consort for humanity and i really like what michael said about yeah that's we all went on record <laughs> during the festival week and uh, now in the, n the next seven years and further, um, we will be called to <laughs> um, match to that, those realizations that we got during the week and what we expressed as our intention. And I think the next seven years, the big call and big challenge for all of us would be, will be be to become efficient as world service on an individual level, on the group level, and on the collective level as one group. I think the last seven years was time when we were challenged with recognition of the unity of us as world service and in the final year the seventh year it started manifest so i think in a way this next seven years it's our call to become efficient and this seven years is the last years of the uh, period of the forerunner till 2025 and many things needs to be done this time during this time and i think what being done during this week of the group impact is that and especially through the silent minutes on december 21st it's that colossal outreach to all people of goodwill who got stimulated with that energy of the festival week and that stimulus will definitely will be unfolding in this years to come and in that quest for efficiency i think the main thing for us would be to embody the teachings to start living the teachings activating the teaching on the theoretical level of our own lives and our group lives in a way it's allowing the rivers of life and love to pour to thirsty men And that's that's our duty. That's our work. And as part of that, I think it would be um, will be finding the 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 language, finding the symbols that would communicate the essence of the teachings. Finding universal symbols that will explain what is hierarchy what is karma what is shambhala what is, who is christ and that it would be clear to people regardless of their cultural religious social political affiliations so we need to learn to speak universal a language of universal symbols And 
one big realization of this week was and we 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 all know that that the Capricorn is the it's the mountain top it's the highest achievement but we also know that it's the most the level uh, of the most dense crystallization and concentration on the depth so the task for us is not to connect higher and the lower not just to be on the mountain top but to reach to the deepest depth and to do what Christ did going into the underworld redeeming those prisoners of the planet and uh, just this full moon uh, came as a realization that this as if technique is a very important one for the action and that's where we assume responsibilities that's beyond our capacity at the moment but we act as if and the same time when we act as if we have to be as authentic as possible there shouldn't be as if in being we should be who we are and act as if. And that's the heights and the depths of the Capricorn. This is it for now. Thank you. Tara, I see your microphone has unmuted, but we cannot hear you. I'm not sure if you're talking. Tara, can you say something, please? It seems there is a problem with this, uh, the, the, the sound. We cannot hear you. If you're using a microphone, uh, maybe try to disconnect it and try to uh, talk without the, uh, the headset. Well, um, there is a, seems to be a problem with the sound uh, for Tara. Uh, Katya wants to share, and she's on the uh, WhatsApp on the phone. So I will let's see if this would work.
Okay, so. Okay. <clears throat> Can somebody confirm that you know you can hear me, guys? Yes. Yes. We can hear you well. Thank you. Uta. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Um, I also have a very strong impression and not only impression, the recognition of the fact that the Vini group is breathing as one sounding a note and that note is of the heart. in deep unison with the hierarchy. And um, as my understanding more and more oriented in connection with Shambhala. was also part of the uh, Russian group meditating during the festival week. And uh, one of the important things that came about them was the recognition of the new group, not only in people who are in the incarnation as of, as of now, but also people who are on the other side and people who are getting incarnated and getting out of the incarnation. So it's almost like the cross, the garden cross, breath and in, out breath and in breath with pauses, this cyclical movement. I guess many more people than we count. It's, um, I think it's important to keep that in our perception, meditation, and connection. And I think Salad Mina Minute just gave an enormous boost to that realization. And I'm very grateful to 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 Ian Michael and the uh, Salary Institute and <clears throat> for putting together the materials on the new group. I think it is it's gonna be needed for us to follow people who are ahead of us, our scholars people who deeply research, deeply and meditatively, and research what we can use. Deep, deep gratitude to our brothers who are doing this work for us and uh, leading the way and understanding of the teaching, connecting with other teachings and uh, holding that post. It was indeed a very special experience to be with Hakkar group in Jerusalem, to be in Galilee. Truly moving as one. Losing that unity and regaining it. And I think that to add to what Claire said, because for me, it was silence and unity. 
that comes out of that talent. And that unity that creates the capacity to, to work, to serve, to love one another, to be one, and to do what's needed for humanity and for ourselves as a group to move forward. And for many of us, it will mean to talk less until the moment we actually walk our talk. Embodying those energies and um, radiating them. Furthermore, It was dear to my heart to see the connection between the Great Britain, US and Russia start moving into a process of working project. I'm deeply grateful to everyone who participated and will participate. In a sense of some prey incoming. It is, I think, very important to hear what we all can relate to one another and manifest it. Thank you. Um, That's uh, all that I have to say for now. Thank you. Thank you, Katya. Tara, I think uh, I could hear the sounds coming from your microphone. Are you there? No, we cannot hear you still. But whatever you were doing with the uh, microphone, while Katya was talking, that was good. So try to do the same because there, there, there were sounds coming from you. It would be good to hear you. Yes. I just want to also mention that it was a very deep work that was done in Lightbridge. It was a sense of really strong development in the group that's been meeting there for 14 years now. Um, and um, It also came to a very different level, I believe, and I'm very grateful to all of us now there working. It was very special. I'm sure others who stayed the whole week will be able to <clears throat> to say more about the rest of the work, but this uh, truly international group deeply united in our work, not just exchanging practices, but working together, weaving in the energies of different countries and different ways. It was really, really beautiful. Thank you. And
Thank you, Katya. If anyone in the in the circle would like to uh, share any thoughts that resonated through the sharing, please. Sasha, I would like to share if that's all right. This is Claire. Um, I'm sitting here in my cottage and in front of me is this um, image of a large, rather battered zinc bucket. And I'm thinking of the word chalice and how the bucket is part of the everyday world. It's practical. Um, it's a container for for all sorts, and every much as sacred as the golden chalice that we visualize when we um, open ourselves to the impressions such as the ones that are coming through today. And just as an echo, I think, of what Katja and um, Sasha have said about needing to embody um, all the teachings and live them in the everyday, day-to-day, -day, mundane, dense physical world feels so important at this time because that's the world that's suffering and that's where we need to go. So I was just sort of sitting here looking at this, this image of this dented bucket thinking, well, that's us as much as the golden chalice is us. Um, and yeah, that's just one thought. The other thought that came through is when um, the mention of the silent minute and last night I was having a rare moment of um, blobbing on my couch in front of the television and I was watching Britain's Got Talent. It was the final um, the finals of that show and it was taking place in Wembley Stadium and in the middle of this great big extravaganza of extraordinary talent and joy there was a call, an invitation to silence and it felt like it was, I don't even know if they were aware of the, of the global minute of silence, but it felt like on some level that message had traveled out to the masses. And there was this invitation to everyone present in that stadium and to all people watching on their various gadgets and televisions at home or on the move to stand or sit in presence with each other for a moment, a minute in silence. And the invitation was was so that they may more fully engage with each other and to be present with the ones they were with and to go out from that moment you know with a commitment to engaging more fully with the people that they were with and it was actually profound you know there's so much glitz and glamour and um literally fireworks and special effects on that stage during that um britain's got talent performance and in the midst of all of that, this absolute hush fell on the stadium and it was incredibly moving. So, you know, it brings me also to what's being said about speaking in language that um, is for and of the masses. How do we do that? And um, I feel that if that could be a focus that we could uh, adopt as a group, that would be very, very valuable. So yeah, thank you to Dot and Wendy and all those involved in that incredible global silent movement. Thank you. Okay, uh, I could um, say something or wanted to say something and it is so really related to this chalice. And the chalice is the symbol of the heart and the heart center has to be open for the um, world server. Um, he says that it will be apparent therefore that certain developments must have been taken place in the individual before he can consciously become a functioning member of the nuclear global servers, which is the principal group at this time definitely working under the law of group progress. And um, so still being um, under the energies of the full moon of Capricorn and thus these energies are pouring through us 
end uh, during the festival week, which is the called also the week of the group impact. It is about this impact. And um, it, I remember one old, my theory teacher was saying, everything is happening in the pause. And everything is happening in the silence. So it's the same way that uh, the silence is the tool or this carrier that we can leave from from past to the future or from older to the new or, uh, or something so it, it is magic and uh, capricorn is magic the most magical sign the the seventh ray is pouring through capricorn the most powerful at this time so there's something about this um, continue what uh, Claire was saying about us to, to start to formulate for the group what all is happening in the science. Thank you. I invite now our widest circle to share impressions. And so for that, please um, use the, the button, raise your hand. It's on your control panel that we could unmute you. And uh, Rasuita, your hand was raised. If you uh, still would like to share, please um, raise your hand. and. I will unmute you. Are uh, you are self muted now? Please unmute yourself. It's a, a button that looks like a microphone. Okay, now it's, it says that it's. So you have to unmute yourself, Rasuita. Okay. Yes, now we can hear you. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I, I, I would, would like to thank you all for your wonderful work during this festival week. It was really amazing. I enjoyed it very much. And as you were speaking also about unity and cooperation, I, I, I would like to make a following a statement because I was participating also in the Arkan conference in December in Geneva and Philip uh, Lindsay mentioned that uh, after 2025 they will decide when the emergence will take place of the hierarchy. So I told him that actually Maitreya, the world teacher, and 14 masters of wisdom have already emerged. They are here in a physical body, ready to guide us through this difficult transition. And uh, uh, then I would draw your attention to a question which was put in the Share International in July, August 2018 issue of the magazine of uh, Share International. Why do some groups not have a feeling of urgency about the reappearance of Maitreya? Um, the measure, esoter two measure esoteric groups believe from a misunderstanding of what the Master Jival Kool wrote in 1990 that Maitreya will not appear before 20. 25 or even 2050 and this even though in the last book he dictated in 1949 the reappearance of the christ the master jival cool states clearly that maitreya will appear in a physical body in the middle of the 20th century around 1950 or towards its end 
in the event it was 1977 which is towards the end of the century despite all this uh, st <clears throat> they still await him, await him in 2025 or 2050. Why? Uh, does that mean that those groups have read the first book, but not the last book? So it was completely a new situation. Why do these groups believe the information given in the first book, written in 1990, but ignore the information given in the last book, written in 1949. Um, I think it is really very important that maybe uh, I, I, I can state you the, so that you can read the question and the answer completely in the Share magazine, July, August 2018. And also, I would like to draw your attention to the Disciple Part 2, given by Art Uriansi, where he states that an essential requirement of the Disciple is that he should ever retain an open mind and ever remain receptive to unexpected new impressions and interpretations. Uh, he must consequently assume an expectant attitude, knowing that new visions will appear, new revelations will be made, and new versions of the truth will emerge to guide him along the way. Care should therefore be exercised that the temporary interpretation does not crystallize and develop into a barrier separating him from the unfolding truth and from the recognition of truer visions. And this is uh, the article uh, of the Art Uriense, also in the Share International uh, magazine, November 2019. And if I am just talking about that, I would also recommend you the article of the Aquarian way forward for the groups, for the esoteric groups, which is in the Share International Issue magazine, July, August 2018. It's really very interesting. And I think it's amazing if we can really work together because all the, all the esoteric groups, and we are all working for the same goal. We, we should really cooperate. And the, the dark forces, they are very uh, strong because they all cooperate. So I would really be very appreciate, I would very appreciate it if we can really work together. And uh, I wish to thank you all for your attention. And I will be at your disposal for any questions. Thank you very much for having listened to me. Thank you. Thank you, Rasvita. We extended the time of this webinar uh, to allow uh, more time for the sharing from the widest circle of participants. So if anyone has any impressions, please raise your hand. Uh, and we will be happy to hear you and uh, I will just read a couple impressions that were shared in the uh, question section. Bob uh, wrote a deep sense that the new group expansion of its place in both the horizontal outward reach and its vertical perception is increasingly setting into our consciousness. The arms of the cross are expanding. Maria Cristina wrote, a worldwide group, chalice formed. The symbol of the flower of life comes to mind. An emerging etheric planetary network receptive to the powerful influx of initiatory energies. 
holding the cross hairs of our earth glyph focused on the star of initiation, Venus, found at the heights of the mountain top of Capricorn. Venus, the star of initiation and the hierarchical ruler of Capricorn, the earth entering increasingly into its sacredness. Uh, Claire, uh, would you like to voice what you wrote? Thank you. I was just appreciating um, um, Roswitha's sharing and asking if she might be able to post a link to the article that she cited in the main chat window. I think it would be... Um, it would be great to read it. Thank you. Unfortunately, Tara Stewart's microphone is not cooperating today. I hope we hear from you tomorrow, Tara. Maybe you can uh, ask Tara to call on WhatsApp and uh, include her the same way you did for me. Tara, if you can um, call me now on WhatsApp, if you uh, want to or share something, just give me a call or on my phone and uh, that way we could hear you now. And we will um, finish today's sharing uh, when time comes with the, another moment of silence. And uh, we'll sound the great invocation. And Darcy just wrote asking, uh, if um, Michael and Tuya, you could share the link for tomorrow's Moria Federation webinar. Uh, it is um, <clears throat> the same as the live link that we've always, um, it's not a webinar, it's a broadcast for tomorrow. And uh, we are discontinuing the webinars until the ASK program begins again uh, in the coming week. So there will be the sacred pentagram uh, little meditation at 6 p.m. Uh, GMT. And then until the next week, uh, I probably have uh, uh, identify as being on Tuesday night and there are other things that are coming up. And then on Wednesday begins the uh, actual ask program again. And I just want to say uh, one thing to, to keep in mind. Page 699, page 649 of externalization, 
and page 535. Uh, atomic energy entered and altered the entire anticipation <clears throat> of what was written in um, the, um, the, the, the early book of initiation, Human and Solar. The, the fifth ray ashram was phased out of concentrated duty between 1950 and 2000 because it was so very dangerous. Um, the anticipation uh, of when the Aquarian age will begin, 2117, <clears throat> according to a private letter uh, from the Tibetan to Roberto Asagioli. And there is so much to do about the various masters, their initiates, and their disciples in the various planetary centers, that that much time is needed. Everyone is entitled to their own thought on this. But uh, one of the last things to be written is that at the great conclave, it will be decided the first phases of the externalization of the hierarchy, how they are to proceed, and much uh, in preparation for the actual reappearance of the Christ uh, needs to be preceded by those phases. The, uh, it is a point that requires discussion, not here, I think, but it requires deep discussion because things have changed. And there's no doubt about that. Even the, the fifth ray ashram, the sudden phasing out of the fifth ray ashram and putting it beneath the third ray ashram so it would cause less danger is, was entirely unanticipated. There are other things of that nature. If anybody wants to discuss this matter in depth, I'm willing uh, to work with them on that. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And uh, Risa just wrote, thank you, Michael, for the clarification on the externalization. I think we now uh, can go into the moment of silence and we sound in the great invocation. And um, if I may, suggest impromptu uh, um, modification and ask our panelists if we could sound the stanzas of the great invocation each of one each of us sound in one stanza would it be okay claire michael tuya uta yes, yes okay so. okay yes. with us whatever so okay. I would then, um, when I, I would ask uh, Tuya to sound the, the gong uh, signal in us, start reading the Great Invocation, and then uh, Michael, please read the first. <laughs> the first <laughs> that was the first sound. <laughs> that was the gong. <laughs> but not yet, not yet. Wait a minute. Um, so Michael, if you could sound the first stanza, Claire, you sound the second stanza. Uta, you sound the third stanza. And Tuya, you sound the fourth stanza. Okay. Michael first, Claire second, Uta third, Tuya fourth. And so if now... Um... And you will sound the, the last sentence? Or yes. if you shall not... Yeah. yeah. And then the gong in the end. Yes. And if you can sound the gong now for us to go into silence and after three minutes sound the gong again and then we so start sounding the great invocation.
From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. As we continue holding our inner connectivity, working with the energies of the Capricorn full moon, please join us tomorrow for the second part of the Capricorn follow up reflection in the circle. And tomorrow, our inner circle will be joined by Dot Maver. Martin Deezer, Richard and Rebecca Hood, Elizabeth Raspini, and Stefano De Bonadiman, and Christine Thompson. Thank you. Thank you.